let me take you back 100 years and I'll tell you a story about a candy store and a murder. So stay tuned. I'm building a 112 scale model of a Sears kit house. Between 1908 and 1942, Sears was selling houses that came in kits that the buyers could assemble themselves to save money, similar to putting together an IKEA bookshelf that we buy today, except the houses arrived in a boxcar and took three months to assemble. This house was popular amongst factory owners that supplied housing for their workers. Let's visit the village of Claiborne 100 years ago, where the owner of a factory was supplying houses to his workers just like this. The story of Claiborne begins in 1904 when the McClures, a pioneering family, discovered fire-resistant clay in the Sumas Mountain. This led to the establishment of the Claiborne Brick Company by Charles McClure, the son of John McClure, which at its peak employed 180 people on a 20-acre site. Soon seven houses were built in the area for the plant manager, the accountants, and foremen, followed by dozens of other houses that were rented by the workers for approximately three to five dollars per month. The workers lived in single-story bungalows made of a simple foundation of clay or brick while the managers houses had double-sized lots and were two stories high with cement foundations and the luxury of state-of-the-art indoor plumbing. John's older son Samuel was an architect. He is thought to have designed the original homes and the concept of the town site. He was inspired by the arts and crafts movement and the houses incorporated many of the features we see in craftsman houses such as the bungalow roof, verandas, window detailings and the use of shingles and bricks as well as interior features inspired by the arts and crafts movement. In 1907 the Claiborne Company built a wooden school and donated bricks to build a church in 1912. In 1911 the Claiborne General Store was built and had opened for business in 1912 by Reuben Cooper and T.S. Selden. They sold everything from clothing, canned goods, farm equipment. They even sold insurance and operated the local post office. In 1925, the partnership split up. Mr. Selden opened another store in another location while Reuben Cooper and his wife continued operating the Claiborne General Store and living in the apartment above the store. Then the depression hit and the Claiborne Brick Plant closed the plant, moving its operations to its nearby sister plant in Kilgard. Many families left the village of Claiborne. The Claiborne General Store stayed in Claiborne and continued doing business. It was a quiet night in 1939 in the sleepy little village of Claiborne. It was around 1 a.m. Mrs. Cooper thought she heard a noise downstairs. She woke up Reuben. He got up and made his way down the stairs into the store. It sounded like the noise was coming from the post office. He could see in the dark that one of the mailboxes was open. <laughs> Two youths had entered the store. They found the gun that Reuben kept in the post office for security. The thugs didn't get far though. The police caught them by the old mission bridge couple hours later. They had a few articles of clothing, some stamps, some other merchandise, and of course the murder weapon, the pistol that Reuben kept in the back of the post office. Reuben's wife and son kept the store going until 1974. After that it hosted some short-lived businesses but mostly sat empty and fell into disrepair until 1987 when Byron and Patricia Harbour purchased the store. They restored the building to its former glory and today it's a candy store purveyors of international and nostalgic candy you might remember as a child. If you enjoyed my story, please remember to like and subscribe. It really helps boost my channel and it encourages me to make more content for you. I have some painting and some work to finish up on the floor assembly of my Sears Kit House miniature. So stick around to the end and I'll tell you what I'm going to be talking about in the next video.
In the next video, I'm going to show you the old school house in Claiborne, and we're going to see what school was like 100 years ago. And I'm going to start laying the floor of our Sears Kit House miniature. So remember to like and subscribe because you don't want to miss the next video. We'll see you in the next video.